In this bone-chilling video, we explore the dark and disturbing story of one of America's most notorious serial killers. Brace yourself as we dive into the depths of Kraft's twisted mind and unravel the shocking details of his horrifying crimes. Randy Stephen Kraft Born in Long Beach, Los Angeles County on March 19, 1945, he was the fourth child and the only boy in his family. Three years after his birth his family moved to Westminster, settling in the quiet and ultra-conservative Orange County, California. As a student he graduated in June 1963, entering Claremont McKenna University in Pomona. During 1964, at the age of 19, Randy Stephen Kraft joined the ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps, an organization in favor of the Vietnam War, while being an assistant to Barry Goldwater's presidential campaign. But a year later, 1965, he gave a complete turn to his political ideas, becoming a radical leftist. Around that time, he got a job as a waiter in a bar frequented by homosexuals, which caused rumors to start circulating at the university about his supposed homosexuality. In 1966 Randy Stephen Kraft left the student residence to share an apartment with a friend, frequenting gay bars. His first arrest was in 1966, for lewd conduct, after propositioning an undercover policeman, but he was released with a warning as it was the first time he was caught committing a crime, at that time homosexuality was persecuted as a crime. However, nightlife does not prevent Randy Stephen Kraft from earning a degree in economics at the age of 23. Likewise, Randy shared the studios with Robert Kennedy's political campaign. A few days after the assassination of Robert Kennedy, Randy enlisted in the Air Force. In 1969 Randy Stephen Kraft decides to tell his family about his sexual orientation, declaring himself openly homosexual. Said information reached his superiors in the Air Force, who discharged him in July 1969, having to immediately abandon his military career. Randy Stephen Kraft is back in civilian life, but instead of taking advantage of his knowledge of economics, Randy returns to work as a waiter, becoming addicted to drugs, loosening his inhibitions in his homosexual lifestyle. Perhaps the most terrifying thing that surprised his old friends was when they understood those moments in which Randy said, there is a part of me that they will never know. Given the total awareness of his homosexuality, Randy began to want to recruit young people, the first victim being a 13-year-old boy named Joseph, who had run away from home. Joseph and Randy met in March 1970 in the port of Huntington Beach. Randy Stephen Kraft saw the child as the propitious victim, he was very young, alone and without knowing where to go, he offered him his home. Joseph, believing he had found a friend, accepted and, once in his house, drugged him, and when the minor was semi-conscious he took advantage of the innocent young man, threatening to kill him if he resisted. After the abuse caused to Joseph, Randy went to work, which the minor took advantage of to go to a nearby bar to ask for help from where they called the police and an ambulance, given the condition he presented. After being treated at the hospital, the police accompanied him back to Randy's apartment, having to force the door, finding the minor's shoes and photographs of Randy Stephen Kraft with other men, as well as several illegal drugs. However, due to the fact that the search was carried out without a judicial order that authorized it, everything found was invalid to justify an arrest and a trial, for which the police chose not to arrest Randy Stephen Kraft, limiting themselves to making recriminations against him. For his conduct. If his start of violence began with the young Joseph, who was able to escape, it was not so with Wayne Joseph Duquette, a 30-year-old gay waiter, whose decomposed body was found by the police, at the end of 1971, in the ditch of the highway. Apparently, this was the first victim of Randy Stephen Kraft. The ongoing horror began in 1972 when the bodies of young men were found in Southern California, in the city of Long Beach, Orange County and San Diego. The victims showed similar patterns in their execution, many of them had their chests burned by the car's cigarette lighter, as well as their private parts excised. Finally, the true link that united all the victims was that all of them had ingested alcohol with drugs, almost always Valium. On one occasion a body was found with the eyelids cut off so that the victim could not close his eyes during torture. On Christmas 1972, Randy Stephen Kraft's real career of abuse and murder began, with the first of the list of victims being Edward Daniel Moore, 
a 20-year-old Marine who was last seen in the Camp Pendleton barracks. His body was found a few days later in the ditch of a nearby road. Moore had been strangled, beaten and had bite marks all over his body. Six weeks after this event, on February 6, 1973, an unidentified naked youth was found at the East La Freeway station in the Los Angeles district. The victim was about 18 years old and presented the same signs as the previous victim. His identity was never discovered. Easter Sunday 1973 brought another macabre surprise when the body of another unidentified young man was found on Huntington Beach. The victim was fully clothed, but there was something curious, he had no shoes or socks. His pants were bloody from the abuse he had been subjected to. Forensics determined his cause of death to be blood loss or suffocation. The following year the remains of another unidentified dismembered victim were found in Long Beach. She had marks from strong restraints. Randy Stephen Kraft had taken a liking to the abuse and killing of young people arriving on July 28, 1973 when he met Ron Weeb, who went out to have fun in several taverns, disappearing that same night. Two days later his body appeared on Interstate 405 in Seal Beach, fully clothed but barefoot, beginning to be the killer's signature. The autopsy revealed that he had been severely beaten and subsequently strangled. It is also revealed that during the torture he was bitten in the stomach and on different parts of his body. The body of 23-year-old art student Vincent Cruz Mestas was found on the San Bernardino Hill on December 29, 1973, like Ron Weeb. Vincent's body was also barefoot. His face and head were clean-shaven and he had no hands, plastic sandwich bags held his stump, he had also suffered abuse of different kinds. After that Christmas Randy Stephen Kraft took a six-month break until June 1, 1974, when he murdered 20-year-old Malcolm Eugene Little. Randy left his body next to a tree on Highway 86 west of the Salton Sea. Malcolm was a truck driver who had come from Alabama to look for a job. Like the previous victims, he had suffered different abuses. Three weeks later another United States Marine was found dead, 18-year-old Roger Dickerson, who said goodbye to his friends saying that he had arranged for someone to take him to Los Angeles. Randy Stephen Kraft sodomized and strangled the young Marine, left bites all over his body, and dumped his body near the golf course in Laguna Beach. Thomas Paxton Lee was another 25-year-old gay bartender who was strangled to death with his own hands by Randy Stephen Kraft. Nine days later the body of 23-year-old Gary Wayne Cordova was found on a highway in South Orange County, fully clothed but also barefoot. His death was caused by an overdose of liquor with Valium. This victim was not originally connected to the California Strangler murders. Randy Stephen Kraft's next victim was James Dale Reeves, a 19-year-old gay teenager who had gone out for a party on Thanksgiving and never returned. His body appeared on November 29, 1974 with the same features as the victims who preceded him. In December 1974, 17-year-old student John Lyris was assassinated. Two murderers are suspected of being involved in the crime. John disappeared from Long Beach while skateboarding. He was found floating on Sunset Beach. He had been tied up, strangled and with alcohol in his system. A few days later, on January 17, 1975, construction workers found the body of 21-year-old Craig Victor Jonites. He had been strangled to death in a motel near Long Beach. That same year Randy Stephen Kraft was nearly arrested. 19-year-old teenager Keith Davin Cropwell left Long Beach on March 29, 1975, hitchhiking south. A month later, Keith's body was found near the Long Beach Marina. The police investigated and found the car that took Cropwell on what would be his last trip. The car found belonged to Randy Stephen Kraft. On cross-examination, the California Strangler lied that he did drive Keith with him, but that he dropped him off at the all-night cafe. Detectives wanted to arrest Randy Stephen Kraft for manslaughter, but prosecutors stopped them citing insufficient evidence. In the last years of the 70s the murders became more brutal due to the rapid increase in victims from March 1976 to December 1979, as if he wanted to eliminate as many young people as possible. Thus, on March 21, 1976, 
the body of Oliver Peter Molitor, a 13-year-old boy, was found in Manhattan Beach. Two weeks later, on April 7, Kenneth Eugene Buchanan was dumped in Inglewood. A week later in Los Angeles, the body of a 14-year-old teenager identified as Larry Armendariz appeared. 13-year-old Michael Craig McGee was found dead on June 11 in Redondo Beach. While 16-year-old Randall Lawrence Moore was found in a garbage bag on Highway 80, east of El Cajon. Many more victims were found dumped in Borrego Hot Springs near Calexico on the Mexico border. The death toll in California continued to rise until 1983. 21-year-old Eric Church was found sodomized, beaten and strangled on the 605 freeway on January 28. Randy Stephen Kraft's livelihood was computer science, consulting for Lear Sigler Industries, LSI, earning an annual income of at least $50,000 a year in 1980 and 1981. Randy Stephen Kraft's employers described him as an employee. With initiative, an excellent problem solver, and an exceptional employee, who deserves exceptional treatment. Randy Stephen Kraft secretly had a coded list with 61 references to his victims including four double murders for a total of 65 deaths. Evidence found by detectives suggests that Randy Stephen Kraft was responsible for the murder of 67 people, perhaps more. On May 14, 1983, the California Highway Police stopped a man for driving under the influence of alcohol in San Diego, this was Randy Stephen Kraft, who got out of his car, throwing the contents of a beer can. Officer Michael Sterling forced Randy to take a series of tests to detect his breathalyzer level, and he failed all of them. Randy Stephen Kraft was arrested for drunk driving, when Sergeant Michael Howard searched Kraft's vehicle he found the strangled body of Terry Gambrell, the latest victim of the California Strangler. After searching the car, investigators discovered alcohol, tranquilizers and blood that did not belong to Gambrell's body, as well as photos of men, dead or unconscious, under the passenger's mat. Investigations following the arrest of Randy Stephen Kraft uncovered clothing and other possessions of missing men found dead within the past 10 years. Randy Stephen Kraft's trial lasted 13 months, the longest and most expensive in Orange County history. In September 1983 Randy Stephen Kraft was charged with 16 murders, 11 counts of sodomy, 9 counts of sexual mutilation, and 3 counts of robbery. More than 5 years after his arrest, on September 26, 1988, Randy Stephen Kraft's trial began with Judge Donald McCartan. Prosecutors called more than 157 witnesses and 1,052 samples were produced ending the state's case on November 30, 1988. For their part, Randy Stephen Kraft's lawyers based their defense on a dual strategy of alibis and alternative suspects, with serial murderers such as William Bonin and Patrick Kearney in prison. Closing arguments ended on May 1, 1989, and jurors deliberated for 11 days to reach their final verdict, they convicted him on all 16 counts of murder, 11 counts of sodomy, 9 counts of sexual mutilation, and 3 counts of robbery, being sentenced to death. For his part, Randy Stephen Kraft pleaded not guilty at his 1988 trial, but was convicted on all counts and sentenced to death on November 29, 1989. The death sentence was upheld by the California Supreme Court on August 11, 2000. Kraft remains on death row at San Quentin State Prison. He continues to deny responsibility for any of the homicides he was either convicted of or suspected of committing. As we conclude our journey into the haunting legacy of Randy Stephen Kraft, we are left with a profound sense of both dread and fascination. His reign of terror may be over, but the scars he left behind on the lives of his victims and their loved ones endure. May this video serve as a reminder of the importance of vigilance, empathy, and the tireless pursuit of justice in the face of unspeakable evil. Let us honor the memory of those who suffered at the hands of this monster by never forgetting their stories and striving to prevent such horrors from happening again.